followers, women, power, money. Andrew Tate has all of this and he has been exploding online lately. Through this, he's been creating so much controversy with the previous raids, his views on Western society, his views on women. This is propelling him into success. And this story of Andrew all began in a little town in the US, December 1st, 1986, when he was born. Born in the States in the Washington DC, your African-American father who's retired professional wrestler and a retired Air Force sergeant now plays professional chess to make money. Partying, hanging out with girls, and hustling people for money by playing chess. You're growing up to be a chess prodigy. Your dad, who's a chess master, teaches you and he becomes your idol. Becoming Indiana State Champion in chess, this proves to yourself that you're becoming a master in the game. You love chess, learning many lessons from it and how it's played and bringing it into life. Then all of a sudden, your mom splits up with your dad and quickly you're moving to England. Staying in a hostel with your brother, sister and mother, trying to make ends meet, you lost one of the most important people in your life, your father and your chess coach. Now what? How are you going to replace chess? There's no chess community in England and you can't find a teacher. How are you going to keep yourself out of trouble? While stumbling around trying to figure out what to do, you come across a fighting gym. Fighting can be the same as chess, a one-on-one -on -one game. If you lose, it's because you made a mistake. You can't blame anyone else and there's no excuses, something that your dad taught you. Now diving headfirst into fighting just at the age of 15, training seven times a week, working up to the first professional fight. At age 17, you have your first MMA fight and five others after that. Uh, and both, as I say, coming from a striking background, one from boxing, uh, one, one from kickboxing. Big overhand shot by Campbell, I mean, excuse me. Your career is progressing and you get offered more money to kickbox. Oh, the legs are back. I'm oh, good already. shot there. Good shot there. Oh! Beautiful shot there, I told you. Knowing the fight game can be a very hard way to make money, you take the offer and end up sticking with kickboxing and this pays off. Now becoming a four-time world champion kickboxer and making more money than you ever made before, each fight is paying up to $75,000. That money is good by most people's standards, but it's not boxing money, it's not millions. Through paying your promoters, managers and all the life expenses, you're only really left with a couple grand. You wake up one day wondering why you are giving seven hours a day to fighting and what if you can put this seven hours into something else what else could you achieve what kind of money could you make what's the point of being world champion if you can't buy a lambo here's when google becomes your new teacher learning everything there is to know about money and how banks work you begin to write down your assets and liabilities the only assets you have from the years of fighting are your six girlfriends who all live in different parts of the world and one day it just so happens you're browsing the web and you notice an ad in the corner of the website that says talk to live girls now intrigued by this you click on the link and all of a sudden everything makes sense a webcam company is exactly what you're going to do but there's just one problem all the girls you were dating do not know you're dating other women but it doesn't matter you call your six girlfriends and explain to them that you have a job for them and they all are going to come live with you in london Four of them come and you sit them down and introduce them to each other. Explain that you've been with all of them and that you're starting a webcam business. Anyone who isn't with the idea can fly home. Two of the women get up and leave, but the two who truly love you decide to stay and that was the beginning of the webcam business. Many challenges were faced in the beginning. Training two girls on what to say to older men and how to gain more money out of them, which is much harder than you thought, to the point where you had to sit behind a camera and type for the two girls while they acted like they were typing on a fake keyboard. Working 16 hours a day and pulling up to three to four grand each day, the business now needs to expand and make more money. And that's exactly what you do. Expanding your business up to 75 girls and bringing your brother Tristan to help manage the business. Now making over $500,000 each month, life looking great. However, there's just one problem. Managing 75 girls proved to be hard. Deciding now to cut forces down into a small team of eight girls and your brother, making money became easier. And now things were good. Chilling with your girls, new cars, new money, and all of a sudden you hear a knock on your door at 3 a.m. Police come rushing into your apartment, searching the entire area, seizing $100,000 worth of laptops and equipment. 
you've just been arrested, taken to jail in England, and only to come find out that you've been charged with assault against one of your previous webcam girls. In fact, she was your best webcam girl, made you the most money, but unfortunately, you had to fire her. She got too drunk one night, threw up all over the carpet. The next morning, you told her to clean it up. She wouldn't clean it up, and she knew that she was irreplaceable and couldn't get fired. She made the most money. All of the more reason to fire, though. Couldn't let someone set a bad example for everyone else, so you fired her. She wouldn't leave and started to fight. All of he did was just pick her up and move her out of the house. And now three months later, you're sitting in a jail and finding a case that never happened. It finally took you two years to beat the case. With all that happens, you decide to get out of England due to the hell of their legal system, packing up old bags and moving to Romania. Life in Romania was not poisoned by Western society. Most people there still had traditional values and there was no such thing as radical feminism. There also wasn't any unorganized crime. All the crime that happened was organized. Then one day while commentating over RSF, which is Romanian UFC, and you own 10% of it, you noticed that one of the event sponsors was a casino brand. The casino brand was owned by three brothers that have 400 locations throughout Europe. It was speculated that they were turning over 18 million dollars a day. You decide to confront them and say that you want to get involved in the casino business. They quickly say to you, why do we need you? We already have plenty of money and you provide no value at the moment. To which you agree and you realize you need to find a reason for them to work with you. A few years passing, you finally come up with a plan. You present it to them. You now want to open a location right next to the biggest competitor while completely paying for their location and giving them a percentage of the turnover. This intrigues them. You're now going to work with their competitors at no extra cost for them. This is a deal they cannot refuse. Two doors down from now your new casino, you notice a Starbucks with many people waiting in line. This strikes an idea quickly, putting up a huge sign that says free coffee and hiring an attractive waitress to give out the coffee. All the guys who used to wait in the Starbucks line every day now come to your casino to get a free coffee from an attractive waitress and then spend their extra money in the casino. Bingo, you've just found a way to destroy your competitor and prove to the three brothers that you are the real deal. Now you open up 15 locations buying $2 million Bugatti Chiron. Life is better than it has ever been. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, the pandemic comes. People are thrown into chaos. The world is shutting down along with Romania. And with this, your casino business shuts down as well. And as that's happening, you rise to fame on social media. Throughout your life, you have views distilled into you by your father on how the world works, how women work, how Western society is terrible for men. You come more and more public with these ideas. Appearing on podcasts like Fresh and Fit, your ideas and views give your occult like following. With many people, who love you and just as equally if not more people who actually hate you and despite everything you post doesn't well and with tiktok clips your videos are now getting millions of views you understand the more controversial things you say the more views you get on your videos and that's when you have a genius marketing idea to blow your brand and your success to a whole new level once again using your new course hustler university anybody who signs up for the course now has the ability to become an affiliate marketer how do you then do it Create an account on TikTok and post clips of me on there and have a link in your bio. This leads to a storm of people on TikTok creating accounts and posting clips. A hundred accounts are created and thousands of videos are posted, mainly getting millions of views, which bring your fame to a new level. With over 1 million followers on IG, living life, going on jets, having lots of beautiful women around you, you're now finally are the big G you were meant to be when you just started out in the US. Learning everything about life from your father, you finally are the big G you were meant to be.